Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Senator Thune, for yielding your time to me. Uh, Secretary Vilsack, thank you for being here today. It's always good to see you. As we've discussed, I have great concern about Mexico's policy uh, towards our agricultural biotechnology and their latest decree that bans the use of GMO white corn. I want to especially thank you for being um, a champion on this and, and um, pushing them about it, and also Ambassador Tai. Um, our work with your office has been excellent, and my conversations with her have been uh, really, uh, really good, too. So thank you for that. As you know, it's a flagrant violation of the USMCA. It sets a dangerous precedent uh, as we look at our other international trade agreements. And unless um, Mexico relents on this, I think the United States must be ready to uh, swiftly move to dispute settlement. Could you provide an update on when technical consultations between the U.S. and Mexico are going to take place? Are there specific items the administration will be pressing Mexico on during those consultations? And um, have you had any answers from, from Mexico at all? We received uh, a partial set of answers to inquiries that were sent earlier this year that were unsatisfactory, which is why we began uh, the formal process. Uh, the uh, U.S. Trade Representative's Office is reaching out, and I think they're going to begin those uh, pre preliminary conversations, which is a, a condition precedent to more formal conversations. Uh, there will be uh, a focus, I think, on the safety of the biotech uh, products. Uh, this was raised uh, repeatedly by uh, the President of Mexico. Uh, we tried to reassure him uh, that, indeed, there were literally hundreds of studies on this, um, uh, and I think we have to continue to press this point uh, because at, at, the, at the crux of his decree is this issue of safety, and we have to overcome uh, that, that concern. And so I, th I suspect that the, that the focus of the technical conversations will be on here's the, the, the concerns that you've expressed are not supported by the science. And you're absolutely right. This is fundamental. This is fundamental to our whole approach to trade. If it's not science-based, if you can inject culture or if you can ingest non-scientific factors into trade discussions, you'll have a very difficult time having global trade. Yes, we will. And in your um, written testimony, you mentioned that it's a false choice for farmers to have to choose between being profitable and being environmentally conscious. Um, there, there are a lot of innovative precision ag technologies out there, uh, but the technologies can be expensive for farmers. So I have a couple bills on that. And uh, to be able to have loans uh, through USDA that are going to make it easier for them. But they also um, have to have that last mile uh, connectivity, which I say has to be expanded in a recognition that they have to have uh, the last acre connectivity to be able to do that too. So are you aware of any specific broadband efforts that are focused on deploying uh, connectivity to the last acre and how can, how important is that so that we can see our producers be able to leverage all the innovative technologies that are out there? Well, uh, obviously it's in incredibly important. If you don't have access to the to broadband or if you don't have access to meaningful broadband, uh, you can't utilize uh, precision agriculture and all of the other uh, innovations. Uh, what we're trying to do at USDA, with a re comparatively a relatively limited resource uh, compared to what commerce and what uh, FCC gets, uh, we're, we're trying to improve the existing systems. Uh, we're looking at ways in which we can uh, utilize our regular programming uh, resources, which are, are pretty limited to the regular budget. Uh, to providing uh, access to, to, to that last mile, that middle mile. Uh, you're going to see a little bit more of that. I think you're going to see quite a bit of it, I hope, uh, with the uh, utilization of the infrastructure money when uh, the FCC and the, and the Commerce resources begin to funnel uh, through states uh, to get that job done. I mean, states are going to have a very big and critical role here. They're going to be able to, at the end of the day, be the ones that will be implementing this. Um, and I think it's going to be important to make sure that they understand the, the significance of this. I have a cattle 
um, market bill with re for reform and transparency, uh, which I think is pretty important, and it's uh, extremely important for the state of Nebraska. Livestock's our biggest segment uh, that has the largest impact on our, our economy. Um, so there's a lot of risk involved. We see, we see um, um, farmers and ranchers trying to look at different tools they can use to mitigate that risk. And so I, I think uh, we should look to the Farm Bill and how can we help uh, livestock producers manage that. There's a large increase in the number of livestock producers who are getting insurance policies. Um, has there been any um, difficulties with those policies? Have you, you heard anything about that? And do you have any suggestions on um, what livestock producers um, would have to do to access some kind of protection policies? I, I have not been uh, apprised of any problems. Uh, that isn't to say that there may be problems. I just have not heard of them. Um, and I'm happy to work with you and your, your, your staff uh, and our team work with your staff to see what we do know. Uh, and if there are issues and problems, we'll try to help you craft uh, a solution to them. Okay, thank you. 